Hi. So, look, um, firstly, apologies for Sean. Um, he actually has some uh, family stuff to deal with. Um, look, I'm probably not at liberty to say exactly what it is, but if you can send some thoughts and prayers and wish him all the best, um, please do so. And I'm sure Sean will really appreciate that because it's currently, um, yeah, um, it's a family thing, but people who do know him personally, please do reach out because uh, I think he'll, any support you can give him, I think he'll really, really appreciate. So I'll get that out of the way first. Uh, Lucas, thanks, thanks for coming on. How are you today? Thank you. So I'm I'm really well. Um, it's good to be back here and chatting chatting to you um, on comics to movies. I love it. It's great. Oh, and you're always welcome back. And we're going to talk about your next pre-launch as well, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to cover, uh, I would say, one of the best movies of 2022. Um, yeah. Uh, Pop Gun Maverick. So, mm -hmm. and I know you've just seen it, so it's yes. all fresh in yes. your mind. It is it's very fresh. <laughs> so, let's just say hello to the chat first. So. Uh, Moira, look, uh, Moira. Thank you. As, as always, you know, we, we love to see you here. Um, uh, but please do pop Sean a message, Moira. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. I like, uh, and he'll probably explain a little bit more. But any support you give him, I, I'm sure he'll, he'll really, really appreciate it. Uh, Sazi Gal, as always, uh, thanks for dropping in. And I do know you know Sean as well, so you know, drop him that message of support. I'm sure he'll, he'll really, really appreciate it. Um, oh. Duncan's here and Duncan. from uh, Killers mm. Com Comics, yeah. another great Australian creator. Hello, hello there. Um, Shane, thank, <laughs> I, thank you, Shane. I know you've just come off another show and you've probably had a, a, a long, <laughs> long day, but we always appreciate you uh, popping into to our, our, our little slice, our little part of the world. And it's always great to see you here. I feel like Shane has a show every five minutes on uh, YouTube. It's, <laughs> it's, it's unreal. It's great, I, I, yeah. Because I'm notified, like if mm. I'm working and stuff like that, which I'm usually my computer, it goes bing, oh, <laughs> else to watch, something else. And it's nice to listen because sometimes you, you can watch in the background. Mm, mm, it's wonderful. I like it. Thank you. Thank you, Moira. Uh, I look, I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Thank you so much. And um, Jackie, as always, look, um, Thanks. We have to bring you on, Jackie. And I know we keep saying that, but uh, I will message you separately because let's organize it. Let's make it happen. And this, I want to hear all your celebrity stories. So it's <laughs> something that's real. Um, before we dive into everything today, and we've actually got a lot I, we want to cover. Last week, we talked, I talked about, and I've talked about this a lot, um, Moon Knight. And I know a lot of people um, have views on it. And on the whole, I have to say, it's really, really good. I, I don't know if you realize what one of the premises of Moon Knight is. Moon Knight has multiple personalities, which means he swaps in and out. He blacks out. And basically, the main character is an unreliable narrator. So you don't know what's true, what's false, and all the rest of it. So um, just imagine this. I'm going to set the scene here before um, I'll show you this one clip. Just imagine you've watched through every single episode. You've invested, you're thinking six, seven hours of your life. You invested into this character. And so now, as per most Marvel movies, it's the final conflict between Moon Knight and the antagonist. It's exciting. You're wondering, oh, how is he going to win? I'll play the clip and you will see why I why I quit the series. I will never watch another Moon Knight series. Really? Oh, because, wow. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, wow. It, it's okay. horrible. I, I'm so angry <laughs> okay. about it. I'm still angry about it now. <laughs> right, okay. But okay. Let, let me show it to you. And the th cool thing about this, I don't know if you guys know, Lucas hasn't seen this. I haven't seen This is going to spoil everything for me. So this yeah. actually, mm. doesn't, actually doesn't spoil anything because it doesn't oh. show anything. But <laughs> okay. I'll let you watch the scene. And, and just, I'll bring this one up. Uh, to be fair, mm. Jackie, I really enjoyed Moon Knight. I enjoyed it for the entirety of it. This 10-second clip, which I'm going to show everybody, is what ruined it for me. So just hang tight. I'm going to bring it up. But this 10-second clip ruined Moon Knight for me. Let me bring this up. That wasn't you, was it, Stephen? And 
that was it. That was it. That was it. So I'll, I'll give you the build up. So you can see that the guy has a staff on Moon Knight. He's he's lost his sidekicks. You know the girl that you saw the bit the wings. She's all caught and he's about to lose. Blacks out and he wins. That's it. That's, That's it. the final fight. That's the final That's fight. So when you say final fight, is that like the end of like the end of the, this is in the series finale, the right. final fight. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I still got <laughs> my anger still on that merely because you invested all this time and that's how he beats the bad guy. Right. In, in less than half a second. Less that's how he second. wins. Unex- unexpected, anticlimactic, I guess you could say. It um, was horrible. It's like they walked themselves <laughs> into a corner and then it's like, oh, by the way, um, yeah, the good guy's got to win. Blacks right. out and he wins. Wow. And that was it. Uh, I'm going to bring up Duncan's comment, Greg. And I've actually got you speechless. I can't believe I actually got you speechless in that clip. That was it. I, I, I watched the whole series if you want to, but that's the fight. That's how Moon Knight beats the bad guy. Beats the bad that's guy. That's it. So that's how. I don't know much about the series, Stephen. So what's what's hap- Is there anything happening next? Or is there? Uh, oh, they, they, you know, they, like there will there be. Is a, yeah. There is a cliffhanger yeah. towards the end. You know the usual Marvel thing where you got this yeah. little teaser. Yep. where they drop a little bit more. And I won't spoil that part, but they just teaser right. and it hints there is going to be a series two. Okay. So, you know, there is that, but yeah. that's, this is how Moon Knight beats the big bad in, just... in a 10 second cut, <laughs> in a 10 second cut. <laughs> and you can see why I'm so angry yeah. to have invested seven hours of my life or whatever the hours <laughs> of it for that 10 second cut. Okay. Mm-hmm. On to happier news. And this is something that will make Jackie very happy because this is something which is very dear and, and makes me very, very happy. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Let's bring this one up. Michelle Yeoh has now received the first Asian actress to receive a nomination for Best Actress. So that makes me super, super happy. And I know Jackie's there probably doing it. Wow. <laughs> so look, I don't know. Look, Jackie and me have a love relationship with Michelle. Yo, she's absolutely yeah. fantastic. And I'm so, so happy for her. And That's, I don't know. If, yeah. Have you seen the, Have you seen this one? I have seen the movie. And I, I was curious to, to hear your thoughts on this. I, is it true? Is it, I don't know if this is a rumor or not. The, the role that she played, was that originally written for Jackie Chang? Chang? It was. Is that correct? It yeah, was. Right. And I'm wow. really, really glad it, he didn't take it. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, she was perfect for it. It's like one of those things that, um, like, for example, um, Chris Hemsworth wasn't the first pick for Thor. I think he was like the fourth or fifth or right. pick down. And all these right. people just turned it down, turned it down, turned it down. And finally, they had a deadline to shoot. And because, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> you want it, you got it. And yeah. it really worked out. And I'm really, really glad. So, um, mm. And talking about, um, I do have a lot of segues. I don't know if you <laughs> but talking about this one though, and let me close this one off because um, I'm so happy for Michelle Yeoh to get the best actress nod. Let me bring this one up, and then we'll talk about the movie. There we go. Top Gun Top Maverick Gun. got a best picture nod. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, and, and for people who know how the Oscars and stuff works, movies like this don't get best pictures. No, um, no. It tends to be movies which are political, like, you know, it, it's um, uh, or really dramatic uh, movies, uh, movies where it delves into diff- very big themes, slavery, mm. Um, mm. or movies which are very insightful. Um, those type of movies tend to make it. The, the last time something this big or this popular actually got a best picture nod, I, I was racking my brain. And um, the last one I remember was Batman Dark Knight. And that That's was crazy. the only one I, I remember mm. that mm. a very popular action movie that actually got mm. best picture nod. Can you this is, it? yeah. It's really unusual because I'm looking up the, the um, nominees for the best picture at the moment. And this really stands out. And for me, 
This is really interesting because when you watch the film at the opening credits, it's got like a Don, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, Don Simpson production. Mm-hmm. And for me growing up in the 80s, 90s, those action films were very much, you know, Jerry Bruckheimer had his, you know, produced it in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And Don Simpson, who was another producer who died, obviously, but he was integral to the way those movies became. It's like, you know, so many explosions, so many car chases, that sort of thing. And to, to see this now be nominated for a best picture is just yeah it's it's amazing it's unreal it's, it's really weird because yeah, it's weird. action movies aren't meant to get best no, picture no, no no and we understand we understand it like mm. it, you expect it yeah mm. it's not expected it's it's mm. basically like uh terminator 2 for example getting <laughs> yeah best picture uh nomination Anyway, since it's all fresh in your head, I want to hear what you thought about it. Cause... Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm one of these guys. I like to work a lot, and I haven't been to the cinema for a long time. And I, when Top Gun Maverick came out, I was following it, like the behind-the-scenes stuff um, before it came out. And I was like, oh, wow, this looks really, really cool. And I never got around to watching it. And then one of my friends last year went and watched it, and I think he went to the cinema six times to watch it, and he was saying, you have to go see this film. It's like the best film of 2022. And, you know, I have this sort of love-hate relationship with, with him where I go, you know, I have a dig at him and stuff like that about <laughs> films and all that just to, just to annoy him. And he annoys me with other stuff as well. But I didn't end up going to see it. And then Stephen sort of came to me a week ago and said, oh, have you seen this film? You know, we want to get you on the show. So I sat down and watched Top Gun Maverick last night. And my gosh, I have never felt something in cinema like this for a very very long time i was like 110 percent entertained from the opening credits right through to the end you know credit sequence and i haven't felt that in a very long time and i don't know i don't know i I feel like you know with this film they really they really captured the essence of the original you know tony scott directed film Mm -hmm. but they they use what they were doing then pushing the limits in you know uh, filming aviation, you know, um, doing crazy cinematography with the planes and stuff. But they they pushed that another level in this next one. And I was like, this is like every beat it hit. Yeah, there was cliches in there, but it just worked so perfectly and it felt so simple. And like the opening sequence um, where it's, you know, the Top Gun um, on the flight deck montage with the planes being launched off the aircraft carrier or they're coming on and it's got, you know, that sunset look it's got danger zone behind it and it's got the font and it, it just feel and you're like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? And that to me, that followed through all the way to the end to, to the, the end credit sequence where they, you know, they're showing everyone up on screen and showing, you know, their names and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, this is a really, a really like a really well done um, tribute, but also making it more, you know, more modern as well through advancements in technology and stuff. I was just like, I was blown away. I was absolutely blown away. I had, I had a big grin on my face the whole way through. That's <laughs> very rare. <laughs> well, look, I actually came in with very low expectations because yeah. the way the sequels have panned out mostly mm, have been yes, terrible. Yes. So I came in with, you know what? People are yeah, saying it's just, good. You know, I'll, yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it two yeah. hours. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. Um, I'll cover a couple of things that really got. Number one, after you watch it, you I went really the deep dive. Whenever I yeah. really enjoy a movie, I'll go the deep dive. Uh, there were a couple of scenes where you see people black out. Yes. They actually blacked out. They blacked out, they, yeah. Um, they were having the joke that they actually weren't going, you know how they say, oh, you're going 10 Gs or whatever, something crazy. Mm. They mm. actually were. They weren't even like half or, or, was it or whatever. Five? Or I don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't what the, sh- the movie was showing. Yeah. It was actually a lot yeah. less. But mm. all these people were actually blacking out because they had never experienced that Experienced before. it, yeah. And I yeah. thought that was, so a lot of the scenes where they actually went, oh, to that was real. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> they actually, real. They actually blacked out. Yeah, I loved yeah. it. So if you want yeah. authentic blackouts, watch the movie because oh, people actually blacked out. Hundred um, percent. Um, so we, we dissected a bit. So that the the homage part to the past, I really really enjoyed mm. because one thing a lot of movies have done in terms of sequels uh, is they'll take a past character. And they'll just absolutely destroy them. And here's this, here's somebody who you used to like. Let's destroy him or her. And here's the, the new one here's that you should like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the one you should now like. Yeah. Because mm. uh, they didn't. Uh, all of them, even if they killed them, like 
Sorry, spoilers. If you haven't seen it yet, it's best <laughs> picture already. It's too late. Like, um, they killed Iceman and mm. uh, Val Kilmer's character. I thought that wasn't. I thought that was really good. How they. I didn't expect him to be in the film. I thought from seeing the trailers that it was only going to be an image on the wall of him, like a photograph. And I thought that was it. I didn't expect him to rock up because of but obviously also, yeah. he's got throat cancer in that in real life. But yeah, no. I, oh yeah. no, and I really like how they incorporated all that. Not they didn't mention throat cancer no, per se, yeah. but mm. they they did put the you know he he's ill. But mm. even then, he's been he made. Uh, Commander General, like he made whatever rank yeah, he made, yeah, and yeah. Um, it was uh, Tom Cruise character who never, m- never moved on. Everybody else moved on else around him, done. and yeah. but I loved it. Like all of them had that gravitas to it. So when he died, oh my god, I actually oh, felt sad. Yeah, it wasn't sort yeah. of like um, you know the, the absolute cliche would have been Iceman goes, you know what. I'm suiting up as well. Let yeah, me, that would have been that yeah, would be the that absolute been. cliche. Yeah. And then it's like, and yeah. then I'm better than you. But and even that final line, which I um, yes. I really liked about the between the relationship, it and this is something which a lot of sequels do badly as well. They just rehash all relationship threads. Yes, yes. Where they so what they could have done here is Iceman could still be the jerk that he was and go, you know what, I'm better than you. Blah blah blah. blah. Mm. But in this case. It's played off exactly like how old friends would do it. Hey, by the way, who's better? Than who's you? better? Mm. And, and it's not played <laughs> off as um, like in the first movie where it was arrogance and you know it was a general rivalry. This one was just you know what, you're my friend. It was friend. touching. It was touching and, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And being able to shift character relationships like that, um, I think, is very very important in sequels. Um, I'll, I'll give you an, a Marvel example, which. I, I know Marvel gets brought up a lot. It's uh, the Gomorrah uh, and Peter Quill relationship. Seeing that reset, oh God, that was horrible. It's like, you know what? You've built them up until Peter Quill, fi- you know, Gomorrah finally sees some good in Peter and all the rest of it. And then you bring back the past self and it's all reset. I, I, I really hate that when you move the sequels along. I would imagine Guardians of the Galaxy 3, if Gomorrah is in it, it's a reset relationship. It's like all the things that's happened in the past, it's now written off. While in Top mm. Gun, it doesn't do that. It actually honors that. And although Goose wasn't in this one, and they actually made it really well done that you didn't need to know who Goose was, except that he was important to mm. uh, to uh, Tom Cruise. But the way they did it was, they it echoes through the sun. And I thought that was brilliant. Like, you had this nice handover of, you know, here's the next generation without it being so, boom, you're going to love this guy. And I also liked it. Who's the son? Wasn't a risk taker. I loved it. I, yeah, I absolutely yeah. loved that development that it was everyone saying, you got to take a chance. you got to take the chance. Mm, and he's going, mm. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to do it my way. I, I loved it because... Um, so much of the cliche usually is that the young hotshot is cocky and stuff, yeah. Up mm. to be better than mm. the teacher and all the rest of it. But in this mm. case, you know what? You're not. And, no, and it yeah. was fantastic. Yeah. What were your thoughts on like all the, the movement from say one sequel to what no from the original to the next to the sequel? What, what um, I, one one thing that I really was really intrigued by was in the third act where, you know, they, they're going to um, bomb the nuclear um, uh, unnamed, storage. Unnamed, unnamed site. Unnamed, yeah. <laughs> the, whatever way, it is. just, just yeah. Before, before we yeah. go over, I actually really like that. It was like, you know what? We, we don't even care enough. Um, no, yeah. and we, we don't even care enough to name what country we're bombing. No, we don't even it was care no enough country. Na- yeah, it was good. Yeah. Let me tell yeah. you what's down there as well. Did they actually name exactly what was done? It's like, oh, could be this, could be that. Yeah, like, they, it was not like, like it's not like those cat those those bad guy tropes where it's, like, it's always the Russians or it's always the Nazis or something. There was I none know. of that. It was just the enemy. <laughs> it was like it's like you know what? It's not important. And yeah. I actually really like that part of it that it was so unimportant to them mm. that. You did get swept up in, oh, it's the Russians or mm. the Germans, like you said, the Nazis or whatever. It mm. was just, you know what? 
We don't care who the bad guys are. <laughs> no, and they actually made it a point that they were very secondary. Who you should care about is yeah. Goose's son, yeah. uh, you know, uh, no. Tom Cruise. Tom care Cruise, about yeah. these ones. Yeah. We won't yeah. even waste our time telling you who the enemy was. Yeah, <laughs> I, exactly. I loved it. Yeah, Sorry. that no, 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 that 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 was a very um very good um line of um you know um storyline that they chose there with that um, but yeah, like the third act for me was really interesting because like all, pretty much all the way through the film, there's there's all this visual I- iconic imagery where it's you know like I was saying before, it's the sunset look with you know so everything is shot at sunset and you know everyone's oh. back backlit you know the the, the silhouette you're, behind you're the sun stuff. What what's yeah. that called? Pop quiz. So, what, what sorry, do you what, call what, that? Which which part? Sorry, the. Your film, yeah, I know you've done yeah. films. So you're saying that sunset look, that that. Yeah, you know, so everything. there is yeah. actually a term for it. Can there is. It? Um, so magic hour, I guess you could say, like when they shoot the it. The golden hour. hour. The golden hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm yeah. Just being silly. <laughs> but no, but it was all golden hour. It was. Yeah. Like, even even yeah. even the, the picture you're seeing now, that's golden hour. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> everything's bathed in this orange and everyone you know like you see on the side of tom cruise's face it's all this this nice backlight that you know is highlighting him and stuff so like all through the the first two acts it was like that but when they got to the third act i thought it was really interesting you know we started to go into the mountains into a canyon but it was all snow and it was white and you know as the planes are going you know through these mountains and stuff snow's flicking up and it's it's cold and it's not as you know it's not you know, warm like the um, you know, the rest of the film was, and I thought that's that was a really interesting um, a really really interesting trait to sort of you know pay homage you know through those first two acts, and then the, the third. This is you know this is what it's about. This is what we're trying to do. But um, yeah, I I I love I love how you're talking about the characters and so forth. Um, oh, God, now. <laughs> Yeah, you've only got like no, 20 minutes to shoot the shots in my every day. No, but look, you're absolutely right. And yeah. it's also called the magic hour. So I, yeah. I, I'm happy yeah. to, oh, no, to no, see yeah, that. Oh, yeah. no, no, yeah. Happy to see that to you. I actually never, I've never heard the term magic hour. I, was, I always yeah, we used to use magic hour quite a bit, but um, I always know when we used to, when I used to make, well, I'm saying I used to make films. I do occasionally now, but there was like golden, like golden hour is one of those things where, you know, you'd, you'd be waiting all day for it and then you'd, Something would go wrong on set and you'd go, oh, I have to set up. So you waste like 40 minutes setting up a shot or waiting for a lens or doing something, waiting for an actor. And then literally you've got 20 minutes to, you know, you've prepared a shot that's meant to look like gone with the wind or something. But that last 20 minutes, you're going to have to shoot it like an episode of like that TV show Cops or something, you know, this is going to be have to be handheld. But it looks good because it's, you know, got 20 minutes of sun, you know, sun behind people and, yeah, just drenched in this nice orange hue that, <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah. uh, um, let me just bring up Maverick again where, where was it <clears throat> um, again um, I'm new to this one so I'm asking you guys to bear with me as I start clicking buttons let's bring this one back up but the other thing which I also really liked about it is the characters have all and now that we've talked the plot and the plot itself was it was fun. I, I haven't mm. had this mm. much fun. And, and look, I know there was a lot of comparisons to the Star Wars trench run, if you, the first Star Wars, you know. True, true. And mm. there were a lot of comparisons. They had to keep low, keep under the cannons, if you remember, mm-hmm. in Star mm-hmm. Wars, and yeah. shoot in this, the thermal that exhaust. Little, yeah. yeah. Two tiny um, shots, yeah. Mm. But beyond that part of it, the, the, the setup for it, it's so different. It is, it's a whole training montage, which I really liked. It was, and it was not, and they did the one cliche, everything you know about your thing, drop the book. They did that one <laughs> yes. cliche. And I, I, to be fair, I, I cringed a little bit on that. It's like, oh no, no, no. Oh, he did it. <laughs> you, you, know, you know that the usual cliche, everything you know, you don't know. And then you drop the book. It's like, oh, why did you do that? <laughs> Perfect film if you just edit out up in my head. I've edited that five seconds out. So yeah. that, <laughs> that, one, that, that that one scene. Uh, but um, yeah, the whole training montage was, I actually enjoyed it because it was actually a really, really fun training montage. Because mm. number one, you're, you're fighting in planes that if they crash in each other, the guy will die. It's yes. like that. There, there was that. There's a huge risk. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Most training montages in film are fun. And ex- but it's yeah. not you, you don't there is no emotional investment in it no no 
right. you, you know they're all going to survive. But when there were times where people weren't going to survive the training, yeah. Oh my God, that's one part where it's going, don't black out. Go, yeah, well, well when, wasn't there that one part with one of the young guys, he blacked out and he was heading towards a mountain, basically. And he was exactly. like, they had to, like, Maverick came in and tried to, you know, yeah. what did he do? Did he go over his plane or something and tried to. It's something like, like that. He, uh, something like uh, that, yeah. But yeah. the whole point would be is that's not meant to ha- happen in a training no. sequence. No, no. It's, <laughs> you're, not to, you're not meant to kill people off in your training sequence. You're meant to kill them off doing the real mission. Real mission, yeah. Yeah. yeah the stakes the stakes were high i think that's what made it so engaging as well like there was very high stakes all the way through all the way through the film which um you know and it, i think even the stakes got a little bit high with um tom cruise's relationship with jennifer connelly i felt yeah. like i'm not really keen on romances that happen in action films i feel like they're sometimes a bit too dimensional but with this i felt there was such a you know there was a history between the two but there was such a simplicity yeah. going on between them that um you know, I don't know, he'd give a little, she'd give a little, and, you know, eventually they sort of got together. But, um, yeah, it was quite cute and just just a nice little sprinkle on the I know. It know, was a very... On um, the characters. The one thing which, again, wasn't the cliche was, like, she knew he was a screw-up. Yes. It, it was like, okay, <laughs> who do you piss off this time? And <laughs> when is Iceman going to save your ass again? I'm, yeah. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, she knew, yeah. But she mm. knew. It, it wasn't like... And I asked and. Again, it goes against the typical action hero that he's the alpha male who's, who's, you know, she can't help but fall for him. Mm, in, mm. in her eyes, she's a loser. He's a loser. Like, yeah, you know what? Yeah. You, could have, you could be controlling your own fleet or whatever, but you chose, you you, chose, you chose to not to. Mm. You chose to stay exactly. Yeah. And That's interesting. Like yeah. That's interesting you say that. You know the scene where she takes him on the boat, on the yacht yeah. to to go get it fixed yeah. and yeah. like she's obviously in control of the yacht yeah. you know and then she's telling him oh you know you've got to pull this rope and turn yeah. this this thing and it's like oh that was like this yeah that sort of typified what you're saying there as well like you know he just stayed uh, as he was but yeah no i yeah i really like i don't know i i just really like that um yeah that little romance it was nice it was cool. i know and yeah. look the thing yeah. is i'll it no, no, I, I, I can't. If we become hypercritical, I can pick up scenes which you know, you like him yeah. dropping the books out. But, yeah. but the whole point is the fact that I can gloss over a lot of these to actually really just enjoy the movie makes me really happy that it was mm. a really good movie that I can just enjoy. Mm. And so for me, it was like, oh god, uh, I haven't had look again when I'm bashing Marvel and stuff a little bit. It's to not see that level of CG, and I, not, yes. well, to be fair, I'm not going to just bash Marvel. It, it is most action films now in general. The mm. amount of CGI they put in, it, it you get sick of it. You, you do. really do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's actually one of the reasons for, say, The Force Awakens, the, um, the first of the Star Wars prequel trilogies, I thought was, re- in terms of special effects, they went back to J.J. J. Abrams, but like, a lot practical. of practical effects. Mm. And it looks, it feels that more mm. gritty, that more dirty, that more, hey, look, I'm going to be invested in this a lot more. And the fact that a lot of these were actually proper stunt planes, they had the US uh, Navy assist with a lot of the yes. shots. Yeah, you know, all, all yeah. props. It is, yeah. you get really invested. Now, could they have seated all the planes and the stuff through? Of course they you could. Wouldn't, you wouldn't have that investment, though. No. I, I like the way that they deliberately... I think I watched I watched some behind-the-scenes stuff just after I watched the film, and mm. they were talking about how they built these special IMAX cameras to put in the cockpit that would give, mm. like, four, I don't know, four or five angles on the act of flying the planes. And I was like, wow, that's... And you really felt, you know, like you were saying before, when they're, they're, um, you know, they're flying through different marks and... You know their their faces are distorting and they're blacking out. You can really see that happening in real time with these cameras there. And like to do that in a studio setting, it just wouldn't it wouldn't come off. You know, it wouldn't it wouldn't feel real. Or, you know, but you yeah. can remember in the training sequence if if you think about it, yeah, because all they had were coordinates. So in in, in yes, if, yeah. if they actually showed it a bit, Tom Cruise is basically just flying over a field. He is. Like, yeah. I mean, like, mm. talking about the film, not, not about mm. the actor, but yeah. in the film itself, all they do is flying over a field, turning left, turning right to meet mm. the things. There's yeah. nothing there. Yeah. So it's, it, you know, and when they actually showed, I think when Tom Cruise was actually doing it for the first, you know, showing them how to do it, 
you just see him flying over this one field, and it was yes. like, and even that part was exciting. It's like, it was oh exciting. <laughs> He's got two minutes and thirty seconds. Yeah, like he's yeah. gonna make it. It's yeah. yeah. And when they cut away to show him flying, it was basically just a plane over this empty field, and it was it just was, going across yeah. it. Yeah. And you're just going. Even that part you find exciting. It, was, it felt intense. Yeah. yeah. I know. I, I, look, it's <laughs> um. This one and everything, every everywhere, everything, 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 everywhere, all at once. Uh, that's in my my two favorite favorites. So yeah, absolutely yeah. favorite. Um, the Michelle Yo one mainly because it is just so unusual. It is um, again, I didn't know what much to expect from it, but when you went in, it was the absolute absurdity of it. The, mm. the mm. if you want, so in this one. Uh, Maverick, the plot is a lot more solid. The beats are a lot more set properly. And you can do follow across. Um, the expectation is there. You kind of know what's going to... As the audience, you kind of feel... And I use the word correctly. You kind of feel like you know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you feel that they're going to have that triumphant ending. You feel... And uh, the Michelle Yeoh film, you, feel, you have no idea, which is everything is different. So one was keeping you on the edge of your seat because of the action in, in the case of Maverick. And you're just so invested because you do want to see the end. The other one, you have no idea what's happening and you just want to see how it pans out. And it's, yeah. again, very, very different films. Very. Yeah, but they're, and, they're both up for Best Picture as well. At the, I know. So, uh, I, there you go. so I'm actually really happy. This is my... my uh, <laughs> it's your year. <laughs> um, look. Academy Awards and me have a weird relationship. Actually, yeah. they, we don't have a relationship. They don't even know what it is. <laughs> Let's be really fair. My my unrequited relationship with the Academy Awards is um, there's a lot of times where things get picked and I sh- I shouldn't, but it makes me yeah. sometimes a bit angry to go. How the hell same. did that one get picked? I share the same sentiment. Yeah, mm. but I I used. Used- yeah, I used to watch it religiously, like the Academy Awards being a filmmaker, like, a, you know, growing up. I was like, oh, I've got to watch this, you know. And it got to a point there where, you know, some years it's like a certain director would, you know, win or the best picture wouldn't win or the best picture would win and the director wouldn't. I was like, oh, how do you judge all this correctly? And, you know, are they just going for, you know, views um, to get more, you know, views oh. on their TV channel or like, you know, more publicity? Like cause a fuss, you know, it's just like, oh, I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a fine line, but yeah. It also seems line. that there's a, um, you get your dues part, which I really, yeah, true. Components of it. true. Because uh, you know how it gets picked. There's, again, um, for everybody out there who doesn't know how it gets, there is an academy of members. Each member gets cast at a vote. And the whole point would be most of these members don't watch every movie, they don't. No. It, it, mm. It's, like yeah. they're they're busy people with busy lives. Mm. They're actually most of them are active uh, filmmakers as well. So they're re- you know they're not always there. So what the studios tend tend to do is they tend to if they know um, they want to promote their film, they'll send screener copies across to all these people. Say please watch it, please watch it, please watch it. Or they'll send uh, short uh, bits. Um, a good example would be Anne Hathaway. She won Best Actress for basically a two minute song. And look, don't get me wrong, uh, for Les Mis, she did a really right. good section. Right. But when they were pitching it, they were just pitching, just watch Anne part. Don't worry about Hugh Jackman, because yeah. we know he's not wow. going to win. Because, <laughs> but we, uh, mainly because um, uh, he's, look, he's a good singer, but he's not top tier singer. And it was a musical. So mm. Mm. they probably, they were hedging their bets. Let's get yeah. Anne to win. So they promoted her like crazy. So yeah. um, that, that's how they do it. But what tends to happen with that is, and I'll use the Leo, Leo example, Leonardo DiCaprio. He's missed out a few times until mm. somebody goes, you know what? Just give him what a guy. Just look, what, what's his next film? It's this. Yeah. Let's just give mm. it to him. As long mm. as he, he basically, happy. It, it, as long as he doesn't <laughs> phone it in and he's not, he does some effort, let's just give it to him. <laughs> and it happened with Denzel Washington too. And I know there'll be a lot of disagreement with this one. But Denzel's Washington, uh, Washington. Training. What are you training? Do you training. Do you training day? I yeah. don't think he should have. He should have got it for. There's a day. lot of contests. Yeah, true. Yeah. Hmm. It felt like training day was given to him because he's missed out for so many. You know, he's missed out on okay. all these yeah. other things. And um, 
The other thing would be is、um, people never get it three in a year, three in a row. The, I think the most was ever Tom Hanks who got it two in a row. Do Do you think though, Stephen, like the case of Russell Crowe, wasn't he like nominated like nominated for Gladiator, Inside Man, and then A Beautiful Mind?、Uh, beautiful Mind. Three in, yeah, three in a row. But he only got I don't know which one he got. Did he get? Credit, is, was it?、Uh, yeah. But the, the、yeah. thing about that one would be, and I'll double check、uh, the、yeah. stats. Or if somebody in the chat can tell me what Russell Crowe <laughs> went for and save me the effort of typing, that would be really much appreciated. But、um, yeah, even if Russell Crowe was the best for all three years, he's never going to win three. Which,、oh, yeah, you know what I mean. So it becomes this, you know, oh,、uh, uh, he's my friend. <laughs> wow, <Well, That's> I do. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that bias towards that. And not just that, there is a bar, and this is why I'm so happy about、uh, Top Gun getting the nod. Is this isn't the type of film which gets Academy Awards? Like I said, it, it's the 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 films which are a little bit more artsy, a little、mm. bit more thematic,、yeah. yes, a little bit more、um, something to say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This one、mm. is just fun, and、yeah. fun movies a lot of fun to, don't、yeah. tend to make it. No, no. Okay, so. Uh, quick segue because I want to talk to you about、um, Lego. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, I'm actually really <laughs> excited about this because,、uh, just to be fair, I actually haven't asked Lucas all the questions. I, I haven't. Sometimes I do prep、uh, the guest. I haven't prepped him on this one. No, I, I don't know don't what know. you're going to ask me. Actually, oh, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. crazy. But, but first. Yes, Lucas does have a Kickstarter out in pre-launch,、mm-hmm. and so I'm going to share the link. So,、um, as per normal,、awesome. uh, if you haven't, please hit notify. Let's get let's get this up. And Moira is fantastic. Yeah, the chat here is、That's、awesome.、Right. Yeah. I throw questions out because I'm too lazy to check, and all these people who have this huge wealth of knowledge comes back to、uh, you know answers for me.、Um, So just before we dive into talk,、um, your campaign a bit, and we talk about Lego a little bit,、um, I don't know if you know, but Kickstarter has changed its policy. I think I've sent you the link to that, where you can have up to six active Kickstarters unfulfilled, yes. Yes.、Um, basically ready to go, and、mm. Mm. and it's only for publishing. Only within the publishing category. Oh, really? Only in the publishing category. It's, it's category. not every category. Where、wow. you can up to six, and I think that's a fantastic idea because、um, a lot of my Kickstarters,、uh, I don't know about you, is I just I love to get to the pre-launch stage because、uh, whenever you show, and this is probably、uh, for people who are listening, marketing one on one one. If you ever want to do something, you need to drive an action when you're、mm-hmm. pushing something through.、Uh, the usual thing you see a Coke ad, drink Coke.、Mm-hmm. You see life insurance,、mm-hmm. you're going to get hurt, so you. Better buy life insurance,、mm-hmm. and it、mm-hmm. it drives you towards an action. Now you're showing all this wonderful、uh, work in progress. You're telling this fantastic story、uh, as you're leading up to the campaign, but you're not driving the actions.、Mm-hmm. Except now,、mm-hmm. with, when since you have multiple privileges, you can now say, "Hey, look! If you like what you see, please click notify, or please share the link." It. Having that one action means when you're spreading it. The thing is, you might be in pre-launch for a year, six months, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It allows you then to keep driving these actions through, so that you're not just showing some, you know, getting people happy and excited. You're actually telling them, if you like this, yeah, please, please click、yeah. the link. But the great, I, I like the great thing about that.、Um, having the six,、um, Stephen, when you because obviously with, on Kickstarter, the pre-launch page, when you launch, that become that link. Becomes your Kickstarter page, which、exactly. is great. The link has changed. Yeah,、mm, yeah. I did not know this. Oh well, I didn't know that either. Wow. It seems like we've timed this really well. So we、sometimes. have. I said, "Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to take credit for this." You know, we planned this. No, but you know, we we had no idea. <laughs> we were just talking Lego <laughs> because we like Lego. <laughs> <laughs> but the timing is great. So it's great、um, timing. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so、uh, if you haven't already,、uh, please click notify. I'm please, yes. This, already, this is a bit、I'm, of a yeah.、Mm. It's a bit of a pas- passion project, so please, please 
Please click it. It's... Do you want to tell a little bit of, about Gary Gorlob? I don't want to take or... up too much time, but yeah. It's, oh, no, it's, it's, you're it's... the guest. Oh, thank you. Then we'll, we'll, we've got time for Lego, so don't worry. Okay. We'll time for Lego. <laughs> Um, this this is sort of like a spin-off series from if those of you who have followed the Angry Fred comics sort of journey so far. I've released two, sorry, two, not four, two um, comic books, uh, Angry Squad 1 and 2, and they feature Gary Gorilla um, as like a sidekick to sort of Angry Fred and his Angry Squad. And I've always had it in my mind, and everyone sort of contacted me who who's loves those comics and saying, oh, when are you going to do something with Gary? You want to see more Gary? And I thought, I'm going to go right you know, um, four issues of Gary Gorilla and take him on this wild journey outside of that universe um, and put, make him like a, um, I guess, like a supernatural type um, entity hunter. Um, so this reckless, you know, primate who hunts down super ed- uh, supernatural entities for a living um, and give him some wacky sidekicks and stuff. Um, but yeah, this is this is the, um, the pre-launch for it. So Gary Gorilla, number one, King of the Dead, um, as you know, I'm an Elvis fan, so um, I've tied Elvis in there a little bit to this. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be a fun ride. The, uh, Gary Gorilla comes up against some Elvis zombies in a cemetery. <laughs> and, oh, uh, quick small segue. What did you think of the Elvis movie? I have, you know, uh, Stephen, you're going to take me down a bit of a rabbit hole here. I've been an Elvis fan since I was 12 years old, and that's that's been a very long time. And I, I've collected a bunch of stuff. I've got a whole wall of stuff here. And my, as a filmmaker, my dream was to make an Elvis movie. Like, I wanted to make the biggest, baddest Elvis movie. And obviously, you know, you get older and life goes in weird patterns and changes. And when I heard that Baz Luhrmann was making this film and he was making it here in Australia on the Gold Coast, I was like, oh, no, this, this can't be right. I can't do this. <laughs> I'm not like a great fan of Baz Luhrmann. Like, you know, he's a very sp- particular kind of filmmaker and stuff and, I was like, oh, I just don't know. And then and in my back of my head, I was like, they can't find someone to play Elvis. There's no way in the world they can find an actor to do this. Anyway, I heard they were getting Austin Butler and I was like, I was still sceptical. And when I saw the trailer when it came out, I was like, I looked at it and I was like, wow, that Austin Butler's really got Elvis's walk down. He's got the moves down. He's got, and I was like, oh, well, Baz Luhrmann's actually created like all these iconic um, scenes that I'm really familiar with from watching Elvis footage, Elvis concerts. I'm like, okay, this might actually be good. And I, <laughs> and I went in um, very skeptical and I came out and absolutely loved the film. Like for me, it was just a great celebration of Elvis as an individual, as an icon, as a performer um, to the point where I had, I had people that have known that I'm an Elvis, been an Elvis fan for a very long time. I had random people on my friends list um, just on my phone call me up and said, oh, I just went to see the Elvis movie <laughs> with my wife. I was thinking of you. I was thinking of you. What did you think? And I, I had massive conversations with people about this. So it sort of, you know, it sort of came full circle for me on that. And I, I really enjoyed it. it. You know, it was it was a lot of um, a lot of fun. I noticed you've got the um, the Elvis uh, graphic. Is this the graphic? Now, this graphic novel, you said you've worked with one of the artists on this. Is that correct? I, I would recommend this. I should t- yeah? keep, so yeah. um, Michael Schaffer, who's the artist, did a cover for Wordsmith 2. That's right. Yes. So, wait, number two oh. or three? I think number three. <laughs> I'll, I'll lose time. But yeah. look, he, like, uh, props to Michael Schaffer. He's a really, really great guy. Mm. So when I reached out to him, um, he basically says, uh, sure. And I said, look, I'm a small creator down in Australia. Yeah. Um, I know I know the stuff. Like he does X-Men, he does yeah. Domino, he does... Right. Um, if you do this commission, can I get print rights? And he went, yeah, sure, whatever. It's yeah. yours. Wow. And so, but I think... Uh, but if... I would just say, if you want something Gary Gorilla for the guy who drew Elvis in the adaptation, Ooh. please reach out to this guy. He wow, is, okay. I didn't think of that. Uh, mm. I'll introduce you if yeah. we'll talk about offline, but yeah, I haven't sure. intru- have properly introduced you. Yeah. He's really, really busy, but... Of course. Yeah. Uh, like for me, I waited. I just go, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Um, you've got jobs. Yeah. I have time. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Whenever yeah. you've got that what? one day when you decide, you know what? Yeah, I'll just do this for you. Spare five minutes just yeah, do this. What what's the process like of contacting someone like that? Is it like a lot of networking and a lot of just back um, and forth? Or with, it... with with Michael, it was basically I love your work so much. <laughs> I talked to you. <laughs> You're and and yeah. he was going, Oh, thank you very much. Said, Look, I would love to get something done by you. I know you're really busy. And actually the I was really lucky. I got it in between um, 
he was finishing up one project, but the next project wasn't starting until a bit later. So he said, look, I've got this 20 pages I need to do. Let me finish this one off first. Then my next project doesn't start for another, um, I can't look, I can't remember the exact word. So timing. So please uh, um, don't hold, hold me. But it was, I'm finishing this one off. I've got a gap. How about I slot you in that gap? And then I'll pick up my next bit of work. And look, and I just said, look, great. Uh, I'll pay you up front. Like, you know, I'll pay you up front. Pay what up front. you yeah. need. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I just want to make sure my, you got my slot booked. And he's going, yeah, sure. Uh, wow. Send it here and send him the money. Um, he finished off that current job. He messaged me back to say, hey, look, ready to start your new job. Boom. And that was it. So, yeah. I, is it like sorry sorry to digress like it, when when you contacted someone someone like this you obviously contact them with some sort of description of what you want them to create the art is there anything different that you would do with him as opposed to say an indie creator or was it just the oh, same no, the, sort of look, same sort of thing should, same sort of things look yeah, to be yeah. fair I didn't contact Michael with the express purpose of getting a commission to be really really right, fair right. it was there's a lot of artists who and and writers as well so just to be, uh, I I do reach out to people where I just want to say thank you to be yeah, really, right. really wow. fair. There's a lot yeah. of people I just write to who mm. I don't expect them to be back. Yeah. And it's a lot of the lines of, hey, look, I read this. I, look, I loved it. Thank you very much. And Beautiful. sometimes they reply and sometimes we get to uh, conversations, you know. And mm. look, I'm always very polite. And yes. uh, But with Michael, I remember what triggered it was, oh, I'm finishing this one job off. Uh, I can't wait to start on this new project. I'm going, so uh, you've got some you got time, time. Mm. and he's going, yeah, it's just, would love a commission if you have time. He's going, yeah. And it was just that. It, it wasn't right. like I was actively seeking out. Actively goals. seeking it, right. Mm. Mm. But like, I do write to a lot of artists to say thank you. And or I really, and what I sometimes do is I really love this piece that you did. And get people too, you know what I mean? And probably that's the one good thing about social media, that it actually allows that type of contact. Mm. True. So I just reach yeah. out to them directly. Look, they reply, don't reply. It's absolutely fine. But mm. most of the time, they come back to say, you know what? Thank you. Mm. <laughs> that that really meant something to me. Or I really enjoyed writing that. And it's, look, we do have 12 minutes. And there is... <laughs> Sorry. I don't want to come up. No, no, no. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> I'll bring this one up first. Because... Um, let me share this one. Merely because I have never done a Kickstarter which has Lego rewards. Right. And I know you have, and it's I've been really fair. It's always yeah. intrigued me. Yeah. What's your process? And uh, uh, how did you get around to it? Yeah, so this is interesting. Um, my last, actually, my last three, all my three Kickstarters that I've done have featured, um, yeah, the, the one you see there, um, Angry, oh, where are we? Angry Fred um, as a little Lego minifig. So, you know, looks like Angry Fred. And this, some people mistake this uh, this brown bar as a, a club, but it's actually a cigar. <laughs> so I couldn't get one that was um, small enough. But yeah, um, I, I remember on my first Kickstarter, I think I reached out to someone online to help me try and source some of the parts. I had a little bit of trouble with that. So I just went out and sourced them myself. Um, and... Yeah, there's there's a website I think online called Brink, Bricklink.com and it it sources like people from all around the world that sell just heads, you know, yeah. bodies, you know, the staffs, just the um the pants and stuff. Yeah. And on my first Kickstarter, I was I managed to find all these, you know, bits and pieces. But then the recent one that I just did, Fred and Gary um, Volume One, I had to go hunting across the internet through various places. So like I got, I think I got the heads from like eBay and then I got the pants. I had to go to Ali, <laughs> AliExpress to get these particular pants and they all rocked up in this, this strange package and they were all disconnected and I had to click them all together. And it was the same with the Gary Gorilla um, uh, Legos. They're quite big. Um, I got this off of AliExpress, but I had, to, <laughs> I had to build these. They came in molds. They were, you know, like in those old model kits where you pop yeah. them out of the plastic? I had to pop these all out and connect them all up. And, um, yeah, just, just sourced them from there. Did a lot of hunting. Did a lot of hunting around on the internet to try and find, um, yeah, the right place to get them. And they all sort of came from all, from all different parts of the world. And then I just, you know, packaged them up, as you can see there, for my my next kicks, well, my, my last Kickstarter. But, um, yeah, it's been... It's a fun process because I like 
I don't know what it is. I think, you know, bringing your characters to life, um, you know, through little sort of toys and stuff is, you know, kind of good for marketing. Like, you know, sourcing these things cost-wise, you know, it, it is a pure marketing sort of exercise. You know, you you, you don't, you probably just break even, I guess, or maybe <laughs> over that, you know, you probably go into the negative a little bit when you get these things. But I got a bunch of them together and it's funny. Um, I gave my, I gave my, my son, my, what's that, what is he, six-year-old son, one of these, and I gave him, you know, Gary and Fred and yeah. he was playing with them the other day and um, and he, he, ran, he ran into my office. He's like, I've got a, Where's, where's your comic books? And he pulls out my comic books. He's like, oh, you've got to, you've got to make Legos of the, the dinosaurs that feature in the first <laughs> comic book. And I'm just like laughing. There is Lego dinosaurs. There, is there are, there are, there are. So <laughs> he's like, you've got to get this one, the Triceratops <laughs> and the T-Rex. And I was like, oh, that's funny. But if anyone has is getting, I think, Moira, you're getting one of these in the mail soon. It's it's interesting. Um if you open Gary Gorilla at the back, he actually opens up and you can put, you can put <laughs> You can put Angry Fred in there and lock him up inside. <laughs> so it just does a little. Or you can, <laughs> That's you know, pretty cool. You can hide things in there. You know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> but yeah, if, for anyone that's thinking of doing it for their Kickstarter, just a place like bricklink.com. There's other places online. There's actually, they're actually just, there are websites where people will source this stuff for you themselves and they'll customize heads and, you know, jackets and stuff. But I just did like a bit of a Google image search and found. Um, you know, what I was looking for and then just sourced it from every where I could and brought it together. Yeah, BrickLink, yeah. So you go on there, you search looking. your part. Um, 75,000 yeah. parts. That's yeah, it's kind of like, I guess it's like eBay for Lego, I guess you could say, where there's just sellers from all across the world that have got all different, you know, bit parts and pieces and you Why go you on there and you can, see, you can see how many of heads they've got and how many bodies they've got um, of, you know, how many sellers are selling, selling the same thing and then you just... Yeah, you just purchase them, but yeah. Oh, wow, you so can, you can buy this yeah. head and... Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I'm going to be here for too long, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it gets addictive. You're like, oh, what can I make next? But oh, but there yeah. are like there are specific places as well if you do enough hunting that will, like an Etsy store or some other specific Lego-driven customizable store where they'll, you can send a photo in of your character and then they'll go and do whatever they do, source products or you know, customize certain bits through maybe pre 3D printing or something and then create um, customized Lego really for you. I that one, actually. So the, the 3D printing, and this is something that I, look, to be fair, I'm really interested in this, but I haven't gone down that rabbit hole of it yet, is it used to be very, very expensive to get mm. uh, what they call the model drawings drawn up and yes. even more expensive to actually get it printed, to, mm. to get it created. Uh, it was a very, very expensive. But nowadays, with the tools getting better, like what, what used to take, it's like comparing Photoshop CS5 with the current, uh, current yes. Adobe, the, yes. the number of tools you get, even like for me, uh, the stuff I used to do in the old Inkscapes where I used to do lettering compared to what stuff I do now, I, the time saving is oh. absolutely crazy. It's, mm -hmm. You've got all these new features and stuff. So when 3D modeling first came out, the tools were, were horrible. They were rubbish tools. Absolutely. Mm. It was mm. time consuming. It was fiddly and all the rest of it. But it's actually reached a stage now where it's very, um, it's very user-friendly. And if you kind of know what you're doing, I look, I don't, but the cost of getting a model created, it's gone down from like a thousand plus to, it'll take me an hour or two. So yeah, it's just yeah. my hour I I, I went down a rabbit hole trying to make an Angry Fred figurine just for the sake of it. And I contacted Chinese suppliers and stuff just to see. And they just pushed me away. They're like, you're not, you're not making 20,000 of these. You're not Hasbro or, yeah. you know, you're not like a big company. So don't bother contacting us. But, yeah, yeah it's, um, but yeah, no, it's, yeah. It's totally changed now. Because it's changed now, now yeah. yeah. Now, nowadays, yeah. if you wanted to make a statue mm -hmm. and you can actually get the drawings done by whoever you like so you you get you get a, a freelancer basically say hey look i want to build this can you sculpt it for me digitally and they'll, they'll do it for you mm. what you then do is to say postage there's a lot of industrial 3d printers i would imagine i know there's lots in sydney uh, i would imagine there's somewhere you are and what you then do is they can 3d print now in metal oh wow like metallic metallic, metallic resin 
So oh. it's not quite metal, but it has that that feel that of metal. Feel and look, yeah, the texture. Uh, mm. You get uh, you know all the different plastics. You know, you got all the different materials, but you can basically three D print anything you want. So a lot of people who, if you think about it, uh, I don't play Warhammer, but I know one of the big gifts people are doing. Yep. If you play D and D or Warhammer, is uh, for your friend or whoever you say how to imagine their character. You know, if a, a mind's a wizard with two stars. Okay, get somebody to draw it up. 3D printed. Like for one, of course, it's more expensive, like 50 bucks or something. For one, it's more expensive. But mm. if it's a present, you know, who cares, right? But you get, they make one, one off prints and it's reasonable. It's mm. not like a thousand dollar prototype or $10,000 no, yeah. prototype. It's, mm. you know, the material is this. As long yeah. as you send me the card, yeah. I'll just click the button, pick yep. it up. Uh, I'll send it to you in two mm. weeks or whatever it is. Mm. I love it. And mm. so the whole concept behind it is, and the thing is, because you can print like in a metal resina, you actually get it like a proper lead miniature. And like yes. you said, you have to trim off some of the, the flash, you know, off, off the bits. But man, it, yeah, it's cl- that, it's, that's the future. <laughs> yeah, deal. yeah, yeah. It's great for Kickstarter campaigns as high-end rewards as well, you know, depending yeah. on what you, yeah. Definitely. Add-ons. But I yeah. we'll talk a bit later off air, but man, I do want to find out all about this. Uh the, the Lego <laughs> stuff looks really cool. Oh, cool. And Thank it's you. Some, it's something that uh I've been really interested to find out as well. So um yeah. before we do go, I just want to make sure we pop some stuff up. Give me a sec. We've got a couple of minutes left. So uh yeah. as per usual to the chat, if you have questions for Lucas, questions for me, just throw it all in there. We'll get around to answering um uh, as many as you like, but let's bring up Gary Gorilla first. So if you haven't, uh, yes, please, please hit the notify bell. Uh, notify and make sure that you know as soon as it go live. I will share this one more time. Um, some of this, we did talk about it last week already, so I will start sharing this one. And like I said, we are really taking advantage that you could do a lot of pre-launches. So this is the pre-launch for uh, Terra Olympus, the sci-fi series. We wow. don't know when it's going to launch yet, but guess what? We've got a <laughs> pre-launch, damn it. Amazing. So um, I'll share the link for that one. So if you haven't already, please hit um, uh, notify so you can know when it goes live. Um, another pre-launch. Sorry, I'm doing the pre-launches all at once. Uh, give me a sec, share this tab. So this is the pre-launch for Wolf Cubs uh, 2. Uh, Wolf Cup 1 came out last year, so this is the second issue. When is it going to launch? To be real fair, I have no idea. But hit notify, and so um, when we get around to it, um, you'll know when it goes live. And lastly is the one which I'm actually the most excited about. So this one is actually launching um, next Sunday. So this Ooh. one is coming next Sunday at uh, this t- 10 p.m. next Sunday. I'll, I'll be launching it through. So um, for people who do ask, um, let me just share the link for Transhuman. I love that artwork, Stephen, on that project image. Oh. It's amazing. Uh, the guy's name is Ab- Abri, and I'm more than happy to introduce you as well. Oh, yeah. I just think it's amazing. It just looks unreal. It's like, um, yeah. 10 p.m. And the last link. So um, one of the reasons why I love pre-launches is that it lets me build the hype up. Look, this has actually been pre-launched for close to a year now. Oh, wow. So been close to a year it's been in pre-launch. So my target, and maybe Lucas, this will make you feel, um, uh, gives you something to aspire to. My target was two new followers every day. That was my target. That okay. was my thing. I haven't hit it, to be really fair. It's been on pre-launch okay. for more than a year. I haven't right. hit the target. But still, wow. uh, I've ended up in a really good place mm. just having the target of two a day. That, yeah. that's, all, that's all my target was, to try to reach out to two new people every day to say, hey, look, this might be something you might be interested in. And for your Gary Gorilla, and I'll bring it back up. I don't know if you want to have that same mindset, but if you just think about, hey, look, if I can just 
talk to or post to one new group or talk to one new people, like have your two actions every day that you do. And it's not like the action is huge. It's, mm. hey, mm. look, let me just reach out to two new people or yes. whatever. If I can get two new followers every day and, and, you, and you have this pre-launch goal for a year, that's 700, yes. you know, you know yes. 365, that's about 720. Yeah. Will you reach 720? If you do, man, tell me your secret. But, <laughs> no, but yeah. if you fall yeah. anywhere in between, it's still fantastic. Oh, it's still for sure. fantastic. Yeah. So when, it's, wherever that's... you fall, it's yeah. still something to look forward to. Yeah, that's and, the beauty of this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and I, I'm only saying this because a couple of creators have actually asked me the same question is, and I, this is the answer I know some creators don't want to hear, but there is no silver bullet. I don't do there too much. No. Mm. I honestly speaking, it's not like I press one magic button and that's how I do it. And I know it's not the answer most people want to hear is, but like for transhumans, that's just over 600 followers. It was really been a year. It's that's a year's that's journey normal. right there. But that's, that just, shows that shows that consistency is a, the key as well. You know, just yeah. keeping those milestones and being consistent with those milestones. I think is that's hats off to you for doing that because it, it shows. Okay. It definitely pays off. Yeah. And, and the other thing would be like for me, I make it a point uh, before I start a workday. Well, is you have that, and you think about it. It's not that bad. Have your thirty minutes when you're having your first cup of coffee, and that's your social media engagement. Mm. Uh, like talk to people, send out the emails or whatever. That 30 minutes, you can do probably about four or five different actions. And exactly. you decide what actions get you the most benefit. I, I, look, yeah. I, I can't decide what those are for yeah. you. Yeah. But you decide what four actions will get you the most benefit. But you directly email four or five people, you post in four or five groups, or whatever you want to do. But that reach out, it only takes you that half an hour every day. Yeah. But if you spread across to the year, suddenly you've got... And the thing is, it's not like you can market for 24 hours straight. You, no, you just, there's no. just not enough... You get people annoyed at you. So you yeah, just will, want yeah. it, mm. that you, It's controlled. So mm. everybody who has clicked follow on Transhuman, thank you so, so much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, honestly, I don't know how it's going to go. I really don't. But look, uh, I'm going to find out uh, this time next week. You're gonna you're gonna kill it, um, Stephen. You are gonna kill it. I can just tell. Okay. Uh, look, um, we've probably, we've gone a little bit over. Is there anything else you want to chat? Anything you want to bring up or knock yourself out? No, just do. Yeah, um, you know, Gary Gorilla, number one. Please um, hit the um, hit get notified um, you know button there to to um, yeah just get notified about this awesome <laughs> supernatural Gary gorilla journey. That's um, I'm working on at the moment. Yeah. And I appreciate, awesome. I appreciate being here. Thank you so much, Stephen, for, um, you know, always inviting me on. And I hope Sean is um, doing well as well. Big shout out to but him. Please, too, please so. do reach out to him as well. I will. I will just, after just this straight. I will. Give, yeah. give him, give him your regards. Uh, yeah. Thanks Jackie. Um, and uh, look, I'll message you. We'll talk. Cause I do want to bring you on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 15 minutes left of Sunday. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> otherwise, look, thank you. If any, nobody else from the chat wants to talk, thank you so, so, so much. Um, there's been a whole, bunch of, a whole bunch of pre-launch links. Please click, hit notify. It'll be absolutely fantastic. And otherwise, we'll see you next week. And I will hit the button. And take, be sure to take care of yourselves. And... Give me a sec. See you guys. <laughs>